Let's look at two more behaviors before moving on. Uh, I have another behavior set up, which is a scale behavior, and it works just like the uh, just like the rotation that we just looked at. So this one is again controlling a, a local spot parameter uh, named scale, and you can see it has a span of zero to two. The idea here being to scale something, and in this case, we have connected it again to this poor little button here. So scale, and it's connected to that same parameter. So if we would drag this one, you can see it controls the size or the scale of, of that button. Or again, that could be any kind of block, like a video or an image. Let's also make this move slider work. It doesn't currently do anything, although the slider is connected to uh, a... Uh, uh, it's connected to a, uh, uh, it's bound to this move, again, the local spot parameter just for testing purposes and demo purposes. And you can see it also has a range from 0 to 300. So if we would then add a new behavior to this uh, poor little button here, uh, let's add a move behavior there, and then we bind that to that same uh, local move parameter and we were looking at how to create these parameters later on uh, so we're just using local parameters here because it makes it easy to to demo it you can see now the button jumped up here and it, it ended up behind these two indicators here and that's because the default direction is to to move uh, uh, upwards but let's say we wanted to move in 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 to, towards the right it moves in this direction and it's still perfectly usable. Let's look at a few more things here. You have you have uh, this factor that we used earlier to just multiply uh, for the rotation, but if we would multiply this by z minus one, that would mean that it will actually go in the opposite direction. So now instead of moving towards plus 300, it will move towards minus 300. Of course, you could have done the same thing by leaving it set to one here and then just add the change the direction to to go in the in the other way here uh, that would sort of do the same thing. But there are cases where you don't have this this direction and you still want to control the uh, the direction uh, of motion based on the input. Uh, and then that can be a, a useful way of doing it. So let's leave that one set at 90 here. Let's also look at this offset parameter here. If I would offset the uh, move by, let's say, uh, minus 100, then you would see that the button starts out from a position over here and it moves from there. So, of course, I could move this entirely off stage or off screen here by setting it to maybe something like that. And then when the the move behavior happens, then you can see it moves on screen. It doesn't move entirely on screen because I'm offsetting it by minus 350. So if I would either adjust the factor here, maybe I can do 1.2 or something like that. Yeah, that's about right. Or I could have, of course, changed it because this is just coming from a slider. I could have changed the value that is specified here to 350 that would sort of do the same thing but as i said earlier you cannot always control this so let's say you have an input that goes from zero to one then if you go back to this guy and then you would have a factor that would be 350 that would sort of do the same thing so now if i move the slider over here you can see even though the slider moves from zero to one now the motion of the uh, caused by the behavior here is still over the full range. That's a way to use these two uh, factors and offset that you find in many of the behaviors.